Hi everyone, I am back after a long hiatus for our third weekly roundup for Oregon Right to Life. And I'm sorry it took so long to get back to you. A couple people on Twitter asked me to make sure I got one done this week. So here goes. In this uh, weekly roundup, I wanted to do something a little bit different. We're going to basically round up Congress in this video. First off, the House passed H.R. 3134 to defund Planned Parenthood at the votes were 241 to 186. So that is some fantastic news. Now, the Senate has yet to vote on it, and Obama, I'm sure, will defeat through a veto anything that he um, that gets through to him that would be negative to Planned Parenthood. But it's still positive. 72% of Americans support the defunding of Planned Parenthood with the $500 million annually going to federally funded healthcare clinics, which are, um, there are 13,000 of these clinics in the United States compared to just under 700 Planned Parenthood clinics. The House also passed H.R. 3504, which is the Born Alive Infant Protection Act. This bill would require abortion facilities to give a standard of care to infants that are born inside of abortion facilities um, due, to an abotched, to, due to a botched abortion, give them the same amount of care they would receive if they were born prematurely anywhere else, like in the hospital. We're talking primarily palliative care, but it would also make it a federal offense for any abortionist to, quote, overtly kill a child that was born alive inside of an abortion facility. And that was voted 248 four to 177 against. So America, 177 of your Congress people believe that if a child is born alive inside of an abortion facility, they should not receive any medical help, they should not receive any care, they should be left there to die, or the abortionist should just continue the abortion procedure with them outside the mother. Basically what we need to do is vote better. This next election season, everyone needs to come out. No one can sit out of the election. We need to get rid of these 177 people who believe that it is acceptable to abandon a child in an abortion facility. The Senate voted on H.R. 36, which, if you may remember, passed the House in May at a vote of 242 to 184. Now, H.R. 36 is the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act. H.R. 36 would ban abortions in the United States after 20 weeks. Science has definitively shown that pain is felt by children in the womb starting at 18 weeks. There are many doctors who suggest that it starts much earlier, but the majority agree that pain is felt by unborn babies at 18 to 20 weeks. So this ban would um, make it so that no one could abort a child after 20 weeks. Now, only seven nations in the whole world allow abortions after 20 weeks. One, of course, is the United States. It's disgusting that we're even talking about this because we are, um, science has gotten it so that the age of viability, which is when a baby can survive outside its mother's womb, down to only 21 weeks. That's the youngest a child has survived. We have no idea how early viability may be someday. And it's just a moving mark that people are pinning children's humanity on, and it's just disgusting. But what H.R. 36 would do is stop these extremely painful abortions from happening. Now, it's, it's easy to talk about, oh, do they feel pain, or do they not feel pain, or women's rights, or this and that. It's, it's like we're all in our ivory towers talking about real suffering. What I want to do is make abortions after 20 weeks more real to you. In case you hadn't already, I have made a video that has some of the most um, commonly used abortion procedures in the United States demonstrated with tools and fetal models, and it's on our Oregon Right to Life YouTube page. I'll put a link on this video. But I wanted to perform right now the most common abortion procedure that is done in the United States for children that are um, older than 20 weeks from fertilization, from 20 weeks out, the most common abortion procedure is dilation and evacuation. This is a scientific replica of a 20-week-old baby. Babies at this age are just a couple weeks short of viability. 
During dilation and evacuation, the abortionist typically performs a two-day procedure. In the first day, laminaria is inserted. Now, laminaria helps open a woman's cervix because at this point, the cervix, which is a really tight muscle, is closed like a fist. The one job of the cervix is when a woman becomes pregnant to keep the baby inside the mother's body. So on the first day of the procedure, the abortionist inserts the laminaria. Then the next day, the abortionist completes the abortion. He takes his grasping instrument or surgical forceps and reaches up inside the mother's womb where he grabs a piece of the baby, arm or a leg, rips it off the baby, pulls it out, and goes back in over and over and over, grabbing pieces of the baby and separating it, pulling it outside the mother's body. If you're in a reputable abortion establishment, then a nurse would stand by, collect all the pieces of the baby, and assemble them in a surgical basin, somewhat like a macabre jigsaw puzzle, to make sure that the abortionist got everything. For this abortion procedure, the baby feels every single horrific moment. At this point, I just want to ask you one question. Is this a way you would like to die? It doesn't matter how many or how few abortions are being performed this way. Planned Parenthood will say up and down, well, 99% of abortions are performed before 20 weeks. It's less than 1% that are performed after 20 weeks. Less than 1% of 1.2 million abortions every year is still 12,000 babies. Every single year are being killed by one of these horrific abortion procedures. Again, would you want to be killed being ripped apart limb from limb, feeling every single moment of it? Please contact your member of the Senate and let them know that you are beyond disappointed that they do not have enough compassion inside of them to protect babies that the majority of the world recognizes deserve at least a semblance of protection in the womb. Hope to return to you next week on another weekly roundup. Thanks for watching.